This is a CNA podcast. Okay, Glenda, let's get some quick fire orchid facts out of the way. Okay, let's try. Okay, how many types are there in Singapore? So, according to MPOX, there are, I think, 224 species of orchids recorded as native in Singapore. So, that means that they are found growing naturally in our forests and in nature reserves. But, this is the interesting bit, this I know. At the National Orchid Garden, there are over a thousand species and 2,000 hybrids of orchids. That is so much more than I was <laughs> expecting. Okay, and what do you call someone that specializes in orchids? You call them orchidiologists, study of orchidiology. Wonderful. That's a bit of a mouthful. What's the most expensive type of orchid? Okay, so the Rothschild's orchid. The orchid lives in the wild only in Malaysia's Kinabalu National Park. I think it grows for many years before a single bloom actually appears. And this is the most interesting bit. To get your hands on a single plant, guess how much it's going to cost you? Oof, I don't know. It's going to be thousands of dollars, yeah, right? Yeah, I think almost $5,000. Ouch. <laughs> okay. Can't even grow your own. So tough. Okay. And quickly, just I'm going to give you the scientific name of an orchid and you tell me which VIP Singapore named a version of it in honor of. You ready? All right. Ready. <laughs> okay. Aranthera. Oh, easy. And black. The first uh, VIP to get named uh, an orchid. Yes, in 19... back in 1956. Yes, correct. All right, Aranda. Ah, Lee Kuan Yew, named yeah. after our founding prime minister. And his wife's orchid is called Vanda Kwa Gyok Chu. A Dendrobium Memoria. Ah, Memoria, that name. Okay, so it's Princess Diana, named after the late Diana, Princess of Wales. Yes, and Paravanda. Ah, that's easy. Nelson Mandela came to Singapore in 1997. Now, his orchid is quite interesting. We'll talk a bit more about that later. And last one, I hope I get this one right. Papillonanda. <laughs> <laughs> Have I said that right? These yeah, are yeah. tough. No, no, you did get it right. There are several, but I think the one, the one of the prettiest would be Kamala Harris. She came in August 2021. Yes, and she was given that orchid. It's actually a very, very pretty orchid. It's got like pink spots and it's just, it's very pretty. You have to go and see it. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you're so into this. <laughs> Hello and welcome to CNA Correspondent with me, Steve Lai. This is the podcast where our network of correspondents shines a light on stories from wherever they are in the world, from groundbreaking events to up-and-coming trends. And in this case, it's a story that has been nurtured and nourished over decades here in Singapore that has helped pollinate goodwill and diplomacy for the little red dot around the world. It's something uniquely Singapore, and so we will hope that uh, the guests will bring them back with them something that's uniquely Singapore. That was Chia Wei Wen, Chief of Protocol at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And joining me to tell you more about orchid diplomacy is the editor and presenter of News Tonight, Glenda Chong. Glenda, great to have you on the pod. Great to be here. Now, I understand, or I've heard rumors, in fact, that you actually have green fingers. Is that true? Okay, I'm not sure if I actually have green fingers. I mean, my basil and mint grows beautifully, but I did manage to kill a cactus. <laughs> so I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I thought those were the most hardy. Exactly. So I'm not sure if I actually have green fingers. You know, you look at the two herbs, they're flourishing, but uh, the cactus died. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And how did you get involved or how did you come to do this story? Well... I really love orchids and I was just curious because when you read the news, when you present the news, you present stories on so-and-so dignitary came to Singapore and so-and-so gets an orchid named after him or her. And I'm like, seriously, how many orchid hybrids do we have? You that... know, I do wonder the same thing exactly. sometimes when we do these stories. So I was like, hang on, I'm going to do a little bit of research, investigating. And um, so that's how I came about doing this story. Wonderful. And give us a bit of history then, what you found out about Singapore's orchid diplomacy. Right. So Lady Anne Black is the first person to have an orchid created and named after her. And this was in 1956. And she was the wife of the British governor of Singapore, Sir Robert Black. And this is what you call the diplomatic art of gift giving. So once an orchid is named, it is then registered with the Royal Horticultural Society in London, the International Registration Authority for Orchid Hybrids. 
VIPs are presented. V VIPs are presented yeah, with not just not just V. No, not Put just an VIPs. Extra V. Exactly. <laughs> they are presented with the orchid's official birth certificate, and it has details such as the hybrid's parents, appearance, date of pollination, and flowering. So it's it's a lot. They actually get a certificate, like a birth certificate of wow. the orchid, and the whole lineage as exactly. well. Exactly. So we give them to V VIPs. These are visiting dignitaries, head of states. Also, we also give to celebrities. We also have celebrities that have received these orchids. For example, Stephanie Sun, Jackie Chan, Elton John, even Joseph Schooling when he won the gold medal in Yip Pin Siu. Yeah, well deserved. I yeah. have to say for those guys. Okay, and then for this story, you went into the labs at the Singapore National Orchid Garden at the Botanic Gardens. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a bit about how the orchids are curated and matched to their recipients. Okay, what usually happens is that all visiting head of states and dignitaries are afforded this gift, the orchid naming, when they first visit Singapore, during their first visit. So MFA will then liaise with their foreign counterparts and ask them several questions. I spoke to Wei Wen and, um, from MFA and this is what he said. We usually ask them if they have any colour preference in terms of a colour taboo, colours they like to avoid or colours they would like. What we want to do most is actually find more something that, that conveys a story and that tells the person, whether it tells a story about the person that's here, whether it tells a story about the bilateral relations between Singapore and the country where it's visiting from. Anything to add? So what happens now is that MFA will then inform MPARCs about the visiting dignitary. So they'll give them a dossier. And then what MPARCs will do is then it will have to choose the flowers among their current stock, currently blooming. So they have a whole stock of hybrid flowers, but they have to choose the one that's currently blooming because they okay. don't all bloom at the same time. Yes, and they might not know how far in advance the dignitary is coming, right? So they do they have, have some to... lead time, okay. but it doesn't matter because it's all dependent on when the flowers are blooming. Mm. Then they will have a selection. So in other words, end parks will have a selection of at least five orchids blooming. So they will then choose among the five. I'll give you an example. When former South African President Nelson Mandela visited in Singapore, this was in 1997, an orchid with a greenish-yellow hue and reddish tinge was chosen. And incidentally, those colours are the colours of the South African flag. Ah, oh, so that lined up really well. Exactly. And then here's another one. When former British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher visited, this was in 1986, she chose her own orchid, the Dendrobium Margaret Thatcher. And her orchid is actually quite spectacular looking. The petals, they're like twirls, like ribbon twirls, vivid purplish reddish colour, plus a very pronounced yellow lip right in the middle. I mean, certainly not your typical looking orchid. And the petals, they look like horns. They're actually really crazy, beautiful looking orchids. Yeah, it sounds very striking and very in keeping with Margaret Thatcher to choose her own orchid as well. Next on CNA Correspondent, we'll get all horticultural and discuss the resources and dedication involved in creating these highly specialized agents of soft power. And I'll ask Glenda how you can get an orchid named after yourself. Hi, my name is Julie Yu, and I'm the host of The Climate Conversations. Each week, I speak to guests who give us tips on how we can protect the Earth. Every once in a while, we also have interesting stories, like how Singapore's first Tesla owner prompted billionaire Elon Musk to reach out to Prime Minister Lee Sen Long, or a chef who makes the juiciest burgers from only plant-based ingredients. For more stories like these, look for the Climate Conversations on our CNA and Me Listen apps or wherever you get your podcasts. But okay, naming lends something a nice and warm human touch to it as a human story uh, behind it. But why we do it? Orchid is our national flower. The orchid is also a very hardy and uh, resilient uh, type of flower, which is in, in a way very simple in Singapore. It also, the process of creation, this uh, hybridization also reflects something quintessentially Singapore. How we bring together people of different backgrounds and forges a new Singaporean identity. Chao Wei Wen again on why orchids are used in its tradition of fostering diplomatic relations. You're back with me, Steve Lyon, Glenda Chong, and we'll start with a question for you green-thumbed listeners. Glenda, you had the opportunity to see how this all sort of took place in the sort of the laboratory of things. 
Glenda, talk us through the process of how these diplomatic orchids are created. They're hybrids, I understand, so some very clever science is involved. And that's right, clever indeed. Not to mention lengthy. It's actually quite a lengthy process. But the beauty about orchids is that it's versatile. It can be crossed between species and in the orchid family. So in simple terms, it's actually a six-step process. First, you identify which two orchids you want to match. Then you transfer the pollen from one plant to the other for fertilization. It's very easy because an orchid it has both male and female parts. Exactly. Oh. I know, that's something I didn't know as well. It's very handy. <laughs> <laughs> now, number three, you harvest the seed pod once it's ripe, about three months. This is all done at the nursery. Then it goes to the lab. Sowing the orchid seeds is in a culture medium containing nutrients so that the seeds can germinate and grow into seedlings. That takes about a month or more to germinate. Number five, growing these seedlings in a flask for one to two years in a lab before they are transferred to pots in a nursery. Did I say one to two years? Yes, one to two years. It's actually quite a lengthy process. Now, the last bit is waiting for the flower to bloom, and that can take anywhere between three to four years. Really? Exactly. After all that? And yes. then you've got to wait for yes. that amount of time? Yes. Wow. And get this, sometimes you might not even like what you create. And so as a result, <laughs> they get culled. And Parks actually culls the flowers that don't make the cut. Wow. After waiting three to four years, can you imagine? That's an incredible amount of scrutiny and dedication and resources that go into this. Exactly. Okay, it's not all. So, <laughs> once they find the bloom that they like, you must remember that it might not make the cut in the sense that a visiting dignitary might not be there. So, this orchid hybrid can be waiting for years before it actually gets chosen. Oh, no, that sounds so sad. I you know. Like spend so much time, you know, growing, germinating, trying to exactly. like become, trying to flower and then just sit on the sidelines. Exactly. <laughs> and then, okay, so say they picked the orchid that they like and they're going to name it after the dignitary. So from the time it's pollinated all the way till it gets displayed at the National Orchid Garden, you're looking at 10 years or more. Wow. Uh -huh. That is incredible. I had no idea that so much went into the behind the scenes stuff of getting these orchids ready. You know, we do these stories all the time on the news and it exactly. seems like, oh, that's really well timed. He's here, the flower's there and off they go. Exactly. And now we know. It's Ten a years, decade. It's a decade. Right. Okay. Now to make things even more challenging, to have two hybrids, to have similar lineages, that is even more challenging. And that's in the case of founding father Lee Kuan Yew and his late wife, Hua Gyok Chu. So, the Aranda Lee Kuan Yew hybrid orchid is a result of a cross between two orchids which share the same DNA as the hybrid orchid named after Mr. Lee's late wife, Vanda Hua Gyok Chu. She died in 2010, five years before him. Mm -hmm. That's really clever. It really is, and so memorable as well. Yes. We all know the late founder Lee Kuan Yew loved greenery, loved plants, loved sort of the green spaces. Exactly. So what happens after all these years, all this dedication, resources pumped into uh, these orchids, and then they get given to the recipient? Is there any way of knowing what happens next? Like, you know, when with panda diplomacy, whenever China gives out pandas to different countries, they're out on display, people go and see them. Is it the same for, for orchids? Well, um, do we know? No, we don't really know. But we do know that they do get displayed. For instance, when Prime Minister Lee gave the orchid to Barack Obama and uh, Michelle Obama, it was displayed at the White House during their visit. After that, we're not sure because these flowers, they will bloom and then they will die. I mean, just the flowers will die, mm. but not the orchid plant but not the, itself. Yes, that's right. Exactly. So we're not sure what they do with, with it after that. However, they are given seedlings and instructions on how to care for them. And, and Parks has told me that should the flower or should the orchid die, they have a spare batch that they can always give to them again. Oh, okay. So that's wonderful. I mean, so then it doesn't matter so much like how good their own personal gardening yeah. practices are. Exactly. There is a way to, to get them back if the worst could happen. I mean, I'm not very good with plants <laughs> at all. I mean, very worried if anyone gave me one to look after for the rest of my life. Yeah, like me, right? Kill the cactus. Yeah. 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 <laughs> We've covered quite a bit of ground, Glenda, but what else should our listeners know about the orchids that we're talking about and just the process that it goes through? Okay, so... To date, Singapore's orchid hybridization program, it's produced more than 630 registered hybrids. These VVIP orchids are not for sale, so you can only view them at the uh, Botanic Gardens. And here's an interesting fact. How useful is an orchid? The most famous orchid you might not realize or know is vanilla. Huh? Wait, what? Vanilla. Vanilla is an orchid? Yes, vanilla is an orchid. The seed capsule is used for cooking and baking. The seeds, you know, those little tiny seeds, yes. that, those little black 
flex. Those are the seeds of an orchid. They originate from orchids. Yes, they are. It is an orchid. Wow, <laughs> I did not know that. Yeah, vanilla is used in fragrance as well. Everything. Exactly. And then so there's, a, there's another orchid that's used in um, Turkish drink and desserts. So, you know, you see those Turkish people waving their ice cream stick around yes. and it's very sticky. Yes. The flower that's used in the ice cream is made from an orchid. Huh. Now you know. <laughs> yeah, <I do. laughs> yeah, you can't even tell by my voice that I'm a little bit shocked by that. <laughs> I didn't realize that orchids had such... I thought it was a flowering plant, nice to look at and has some history to it. And right. They're quite unique to this part of the world. I didn't realize they had branched out and vanilla is everywhere mm -hmm. and has been everywhere for so mm -hmm. long. Exactly. Yeah, fascinating. Okay, another fascinating topic. The tiger orchid in the Botanic Gardens, it was planted in 1861. It's very old. It is still going strong. It is believed to be the oldest and largest orchid. It stands at about two meters tall weighs about 300 kilograms. The petals, as the name suggests, yellow with brown markings like a tiger. I'm going to be looking at orchids in a whole new light now. I know, right? <laughs> okay, now my wife loves flowers. So what do I have to do if I want to get an orchid named after her then? Possible? No. No? No. Not at all? You know, okay, you can't get an orchid named after her and registered at M-Parks for sure, but you can get an orchid named after her if you go to the nursery. You pay someone and they will do a hybrid orchid for her. Okay. And is it, does it become like an official name? No. Is it something I can like put on a wall and like, this? I made this for you? Yes, you can. The nursery will give you a certificate to say okay. that that's your orchid, but okay. it won't be registered and it won't be recognized. However, you did put the time and effort in there. And remember, it takes three years. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you got to start planning now. Yeah. If you're listening and you, <laughs> you have someone in your life that likes flowers and wants an orchid named after it's going to be an investment of time, time as much as anything. Uh, Glenda, what would you name an orchid after you then? After we've had all these wonderful names. Perfect name for me. Yeah, go on. Vanda Miss Glenda. <laughs> oh, it just rolls off the tongue. Exactly. Oh, but again, you can't have that officially done? No, nope. no, not at all. Thank you, Glenda. Time with you is always full of laughter and learning. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you. It was so much fun. As you've heard, Singapore's orchid diplomacy dates back nearly 70 years. It's a unique gesture of friendship that forges the Singapore identity beyond its shores. The TV version CNA Correspondent airs on CNA every Wednesday at 9.30 p.m. You can also watch it whenever you like on CNA.Asia. Do like and subscribe to this podcast version that takes you behind the scenes with our correspondents. And thank you for listening. Our podcast team is made up of Sai Ye Win, Crispina Robert, Clara Ong, and me, Steve Lai. Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com slash renew to learn more.